Hello, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemanly ladies, and some lady gentlemen, I know you're out there. I am your hostess with the mostest, Alexander Rodriguez here for On the Rocks, where celebrities and cocktails mix, and we had to get extra cocktails and mix today because we have a big cast today. Tonight, we kick off Pride with a bang, not a bump, although who knows, with our biggest cast to date. Uh, from the It Gets Better project, we welcome Brian Wenke and Ross Van Metzke. Uh, Von Metzke sounds like a gay dictator of like a country I want to go visit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's not how you say. It? Well, he'll he'll set me straight. <laughs> straight. Huh. FBI agent turned singer songwriter Susan Surftone uh, with live performances with Queer as Folks, Pepper Mache, and X Factors Kitty Brucknell with a special uh, appearance by pop star Ricky Rebel with my guest co-host DJ Wilsey in the house with Grammy Awards Performer of the Year and my gal pal and designated driver Mr. Wesley Woods. Let the pride begin. <laughs> And most poor suckers are starving to death. I'd like to propose a toast. This is On the Rocks with Alexander, coming at you from Sunset Gower Studios in the heart of Hollywood, where I drink with your favorite celebrities, and we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV, and, and that's about it. So pop a court, pour a glass, lean back, and enjoy On the Rocks every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Universal Broadcasting Network. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Oh, thank you, audience. Thank you. They're so prideful. <laughs> Tonight is the biggest, the biggest cast that we've had uh, to date. We have so many different types of people in the studio, uh, in front of the camera, behind the camera. We are truly celebrating diversity. Happy Pride, y'all. Uh, today's show is brought to you by Hotel Fusion uh, and its restaurant, Taste on Ellis, in San Francisco. Go like them on social media. I'll be doing appearances and live broadcasts from them this summer uh, and giveaways. Uh, hello to our listeners around the nation on iHeartRadio, Universal Broadcasting Network, Player FM, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, Satchel, iTunes. And, of course, we are streaming on Facebook Live on Hillcrest Social in San Diego, True FM in Ohio, Hi, Ohio, and nationally on Reverie Network all around the nation. My mom, Mama Rose, is in the chat room. She's answering your questions. If it's a burning question, she'll interrupt the show and ask us. She's done research on everybody, and she loves chatting. <laughs> Keep her busy, otherwise she'll drink too much vodka, and who knows what'll happen. <laughs> I'll have a new daddy. <laughs> Hi, Mama Rose. Yeah. Hey, Mama Rose. Uh, Tony, Kurt is still out interning, so our engineer is UBN uh, station owner, Tony Sweet. Thanks so much for dressing up for this occasion. <laughs> yes, it's like the Gap had a sale. Um, <laughs> Tony, what is your advice for the day? It wasn't the Gap. It was actually a secondhand store. But <laughs> my my grandpappy... They don't call you secondhand <laughs> Rose for, right. for a reason. <laughs> but my grandpappy always always gave me advice. He says, never invest in your money into a bank and only get 6% because you can invest in whiskey and get 40%. Yes! <laughs> That's for you. That I was enjoy for you. that. I enjoy that one. Although the last time you got 6% at a bank was, what, 1980? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> San Diego, I am coming for you this Saturday. We're going to talk all about it in the second half of our show. Out at the fair. Uh, I'm going to be there emceeing, live streaming. Oh, God help us on live streaming. Uh, with performances uh, from Pepper Mache, Kitty Brocknell, and Ricky Rebel, who are performing here in the second half of this show to give you a sneak peek. OC Pride, I am performing June 24th at the Pride Speak stage at 4 p.m. And I'm performing Showtime. Tunes uh, with a shirtless violinist, YouTube sensation is flying in to perform with me. For real. For real. For real. <laughs> for real. <laughs> we, we call the show Shirtless and Tipsy. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Um, so come catch us at OC Pride. Um, he's uh, a shirtless violinist. We'll actually be here June 20th. We're going to perform live on the show. <clears throat> Yikes. Uh, check out my latest article in Bear World Magazine about the whole Kathy Griffin debacle. Way in. Uh, coming up on the show, we have Marianne from Gilligan's Island. I'm so excited. Don Wells. Uh, Peter Page from Queer as Folk and Carly Hughes from American Housewife are coming up. All righty. Let me reintroduce my co-host to our listeners. Returning to the show is audience favorite and my favorite, Wesley Woods, comedian. Oh, calm down. I haven't finished yet. <laughs> hey, I'm, 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 I'm Premature I'm over there. there. Mm, happy Pride. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, comedian, adult <laughs> entertainer, you just won uh, Performer of the Year by the Grabby Awards, um, and you just came back from Gay Days Orlando. I did. What is Gay Days? Like, every day is a gay day for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hello. I don't even know how to sum it up other than just gay. 
It's just gay. It, but is it like a dance event? Is it a it's picnic? A, it's a it's a circuit party of sorts. Oh, it's a circuit. I thought yeah. it was like a Disney thing, but it's not. I mean, you can go to Disney, but I think <laughs> they're some people thought they Disney. were at Disney. <laughs> 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 um, let's just say that the, uh, the the hotel rooms have the blinds open and the doors, you know, cracked and. Oh. It is a <laughs> happy pride. Yeah, it, it is a great way to kick off pride. <laughs> great. So, well, that's one side of pride. We have that, and then we get the it gets better project. Wow, both sides of the spectrum. I was there to host a porn bingo, and then I also was there to uh, do the closing party with Shishi Larue. Okay, well, we love Shishi. Yeah. So, uh, porn bingo. Like, what were the prizes? Should I even Lap ask? dances and cock rings and um, Sorry, DVDs. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, mom. That I didn't send you any. I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> Got, well, I was going to say something, but I, but I won't. Um, okay, but I, I need to review your clothing choices. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so let's show you the first picture. Shit, so let's do it. <laughs> this is you on stage, and I, I think this was for the porn bingo. This is. You're literally in a, a crop top, I think is what the I'm youngins like, are calling it It's these a days. crop top. It's Prince Charles and He's Prince the one on the very far, far, far left. Yeah. Prince Charles and who? Prince Eric making out. Is that legal? I don't know. Oh, all right. But it was it was gay days at Disney. So In the short gay, shorts. It couldn't get any gayer than that. Yeah, Those well, shorts it... were actually long compared to everyone else's. Okay. There was no, like, dress code there. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Let, let's play the next picture. Um, this one is cute. It's like the pink shirt, two roses, the rose-tinted glasses. So cute. So 70s. I love it. 70s yeah. porn star is what I'm going for. I want to make gay porn gay again. <laughs> I think it's gay enough. <laughs> Have you seen what happens? Uh, you should see the people I work with. <laughs> <laughs> rough. And I don't mean rough like a dog. I mean rough. <laughs> Too bad you don't mean rough like a dog. Um, and then this is how you ended up. And I think this is your fan's favorite outfit. That's you on the left. In an elevator, literally no pants. Look at the meaty leg. Okay. I don't think people are looking at the leg, but okay. <laughs> that's a kiss. That's just like a kiss tank top and, you know, like some white Speedos. It's very. That was very PG-13. It's very in right now. Too. Male romper and, and kiss t-shirt and, and okay. Totally. But my because you know we've had we've had some underwear models we've had other porn stars come you in. You call them that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> according to their social media, they're underwear models. <laughs> click click. Um, but my thing is like you walk around like what if you get cold? What if you get well, hot? I, you know my thing was it was raining the entire time we were there, so I'm actually battling a cold right now because I was dressed like such a slut. <laughs> <laughs> That's God's way of saying, mm-mm, not next time. <laughs> it reminds me of Blanche from Golden Girls when she's like, I can't believe I, I feel so bad, but I can look so good. <laughs> that, yeah, that's me. Um, now, you are my designated driver because uh, you live a life of sobriety, which for the show, hey. My power life to you. is on the rocks, so I don't need to be drinking okay. on the rocks. Well, right? you, you leave, I'm usually <laughs> under the rocks by the end of the evening. Um, but you have to celebrate pride. You have to do all these events as sober. Yeah. So do you have any tips for for being sober during Pride or friends of sober people? Because uh, I don't know how to act around you guys. I, I always remi- tell my friends who are sober and going out with their friends just to remind yourself that you love them, first and foremost, because they become a handful. <laughs> um, always or two in- handfuls. <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> Some of us bigger girls are two handfuls. <laughs> that's, my, that's my favorite. <laughs> I'm like a hands, mouth, throw it all on oh, me. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and then, you know, like, you know, this is is in, in basically um, this, this kind of hits close to home for me last year with um, the Orlando events. I always tell my friends who are sober, know where your exits are. That to me is most important because everyone else is partaking in fun and forgetting of where they're at and the possibilities of, what, of what's around them. So I, those are my big things. Remember that you love them because they're going to be a handful. And remember where the exits are located. Well, some friends are, like you said, more handfuls than, than not. Yeah. Am I right, Jennifer Salinas? I mean, <laughs> I'm, I still call you friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't call hey. me on the phone, but you call me friend. Because <laughs> <laughs> typically when you're calling me, you're drunk at a haunted house. That's not really haunted. Well, and I, I'm, I have the picture. We're actually going to talk about Okay, good. Totally going to talk about good. that. <laughs> but, but I know how it's like, but you also don't want your friends to feel uncomfortable. No. And you, know, you don't want people to say, hey, is it okay if I have this drink? Because then that just draws attention to it. Yeah, you know, my, my tips are, though, like, always have a drink in your hand. Um, you know, you don't have to walk around with a water bottle if you don't feel comfortable. Yeah, a you soda. Know, have a, yeah, have a, have a cocktail a glass. But, yeah, put soda in there. Put a splash of grenadine up in it. I don't know. Get crazy, y'all. Yeah, have fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> Do your thing. I don't know, but first it's off, just it, cheaper it, to be sober too. God, yeah. I wish I was sober. And you don't have to apologize the next morning if you don't want to. 
Yeah. <clears throat> it's getting a little uncomfortable <laughs> for me. <laughs> I could literally own a mansion in Beverly Hills if I'm I was sure. sober. I'm sure. <laughs> With room for a pony. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, be mindful of your sober friends. They yeah. want to enjoy Pride as well. Don't be messy. Yeah. Keep it cute. Or put it on mute. Or keep it mute. <laughs> Yeah. yeah good. Did you look at my notes Keep before? It classy. There goes that joke. When somebody steals my joke, I get a little, like a little fairy inside me dies. I'm like, don't get to say that joke. It happened before the show. All right. Uh, also, returning the show is co-founder of Hillcrest Social and uh, founder or co-founder at Out at the Fair. Uh, I guess co-founder because me and my friends put it together. We went to the fair. We checked in on Facebook trying to pull some gay people, and it grew from there. Facebook. Facebook. Murder. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, those were faces. And <laughs> okay. Yes. Like they a came book. in a book form. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but Hillcrest Social is one of our media partners. Yes. You guys stream our shows after yes. the fact. You also stream us Facebook Live. Hi, Hillcrest Social. And it is the app for people to find out what's going on LGBT-wise in, in San Diego, Hillcrest yep. area. And you guys do freebies. Like every week, you give away like good stuff. Yeah, we're giving away stuff all the time. We paired with the House of Blues and we give away concert tickets, stuff to their shows every Tuesday. We're working with a bunch of other stuff, people in Hillcrest too, to give away more stuff. I just love to give stuff away. Well, God bless you. Yes, you've been giving away for years. <laughs> um, but out at the fair is the day that, that all the gays take over San Diego County Fair. Yes. Which is so odd. Mixing gays with like everything fried. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's a month out from our pride, so we can still eat. <laughs> Honey, I've been practicing for a while. <laughs> but congratulations, though, because you and your friends and, you, and your team of people have really changed the face. You've brought the LGBT community to the face of it's not just Hillcrest anymore. Yep. It's like, hey, here we are. Yep. But it's not in like a here we are. It's like, hey, we just want to hang out and have fun. And... Yep. We do it in a family-friendly way. Like we've got games for kids all day. We do like different types of programming. And I'm not near that tent. I don't want to be no, anywhere near kids. I put kids. you on the other Either. side. Yeah. Next I'm not to the allowed. Rides, drowned you out. We're good. <laughs> How dare you, sir? It's probably like fake out of the fair that he's giving me. It's like a fake microphone and like cardboard people. Just passing the drinks. I'm gonna okay. nail that. Basically, <laughs> that's actually really funny. Oh. Um, but you're also a DJ. You DJ at huge events in yep. San Diego. You uh, DJ regularly at Riches. Yep. Which we've all been to Riches. Yes. You don't end <laughs> up rich when you time. go to Riches. Yeah. We've met a few Riches at Riches. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy Warbucks. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> what songs are people requesting over and over again? Oh, the one with Justin Bieber right now. The Desp Despacito? Yeah, that one. That's how he sounds when he says it, too. Yes. <laughs> White people speak singing Spanish. More, oh, please. It's like, yeah, our requests take apps, and it's probably every 15 minutes someone tries to request that song. And I'm like, oh, man, no, not today. But you're the nice guy. Like, there's DJs, especially in West Hollywood, that they'll just like, uh, uh. but you're like a nice guy. So how, how do you deal with that? I built an app for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. So you don't have to. Yep. <laughs> you and build... I can check it from my phone. And then um, if they want to really hear their song, they can pay for it and we'll play it next. So you're not kidding. Oh, it's a real, oh, it's a DJ smart. app. Yeah, well, it's That's built smart. into Hillcrest Social. Every for antisocial DJs. Basically. <laughs> don't talk to me. Don't touch me. <laughs> just pay smart. me. <laughs> I'd smart. be so broke. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot of Britney on repeat some days. It's just like do this uh. now how has the dj world changed over the years because you've been djing for a while yeah now. yeah um well we all started you know carrying the big packs of cds and records and now it's just like a little hard drive and i mean my computer and my board and we're good to go but there's programs now that will automatically dj does that take business away from you can you can you spot a fake dj like a paris hilton when her yeah, board's not even plugged mix. in if the songs okay. don't sound like they go together yeah you can tell Okay. I notice real DJs from how they mix. If you can put in the effort and you don't notice the songs changing till you hear the words, that's a good DJ. Now, what kind of music are you listening to on your own? Everything. Like, really, though? Uh, like, what's, what's, what what's, your, in, what's yeah, on your playlist three. right now? Yeah. Mm. Most played. I've, I've just signed up for Apple Music recently, so I've just... Just? Been, yeah, I know. I, I'm a DJ. I guess Did your 8-track machine free. break down? Like, what's <laughs> happening? <laughs> no, so I've just been listening to a lot of their, like, pop hits. I, like, so I love pop music. Selena Gomez. Yeah. Okay. Guilty. I'm still listening to Mbop. I'm not even kidding. Hey, you. Every remix of Mbop, I am all about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remix that, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to dance to that. That would be fun. All you have to do on YouTube is remix Mbop and your hours of fun. <laughs> I'm so sad to say. <laughs> just do the chorus over and over. Yes. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah. They've actually grown up to be very handsome gentlemen. Hmm. Yes. 
<clears throat> anyway. Stalker. <laughs> what? How do you know all this? Okay. How do you think you've successfully uh, established a brand name for the LGBT community in, in the straight community? Because I know you've done a lot of events. You've done a lot of outreach. What do you think are some of the key components in building your brand? Focusing on family friendly, honestly. That's like our key. I know. <laughs> Hasn't worked for this show. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what we're missing. Yeah. <laughs> No, but. Hello, kids. <laughs> Actually, last week we had all the cartoon voices yeah. saying naughty things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but, I mean, we just focus on pe- trying to bring people out of Hillcrest. We live in San Diego. There's so much to do. I mean, everywhere you learn, there's turn, there's a beach, there's someplace new to check out. So our thought is just we want to branch out from Hillcrest. We want to see everything we can and just show San Diego County what we're about. I love that. And that's what we hope for the LGBT community to be. In general. Part of just a yeah. normal part yeah, of. Yeah, because I'm ready to just be a person. Me too. I'm, I've been waiting for a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, gentlemen, for joining me. You guys are going to help me through this. I'm ready. We have a big night. Um, just real fast, I want to give advice to my listeners. Um, if you go to a haunted house, make sure it is haunted. Um, Tony, can you play this picture? <laughs> this is what we were talking about. Every night after the show turns into – and DJ, Willsy, remember last time you, were, you guys were up, it turned into a shit show as well? Yep. This is Tuesday night. Like, it's my, it's my Friday night. So I go out with friends. So this was taken uh, after last week. I was going to my friend's house because the party – Party was stops. over. Well, yeah, it and, right. But it was <laughs> publicly over, and so it was about four, four in the morning. And there was this cool house, and it was abandoned, and there was like trash and like shutters and missing. There was and I'm like, no trespassing signs, right? And it was, and I was like, this <laughs> okay. is haunted because when there I drink, I tend, <laughs> when I drink, I tend to become like paranormal and like I can feel things. And I'm like, I feel this house and whatever. And I'm like, I went to my friend, take pictures. So I took this lovely Dolce and Gabbana shot in front of the haunted house, <laughs> and I just I wanted to go in and see, you know, feel things until the owner came out <laughs> and it was not an abandoned house it was just a poor person's house so my apologies to you sir <laughs> happy halloween <laughs> you guys I, I almost crapped my pants because i heard the door open up hey and i was like ah it's the real ghost <laughs> anyway there we go all right let's get the show on the road uh, i want to formally introduce um our our opening panel the It Gets Better Project was founded by gay activist, author, media pundit, and journalist Dan Savage and his husband Terry Miller in September uh, of 2010 in response to the suicides of teenagers who were bullied because they were gay or because their uh, peers suspected them uh, to be gay. Its goal is to prevent suicide among LGBT youth by having uh, gay adults convey the message that these teens' lives will improve. The project has grown rapidly. Um, over 200 videos were uploaded in the first week, and the project's YouTube channel reached uh, the 650 video limit in the next week. Uh, it has become a worldwide movement inspiring more than 50,000 user-created videos viewed more than 50 million times. To date, the project has received submissions from celebrities, organizations, activists, politicians, and media personalities, including, and you guys go on YouTube and look up all these videos. Everyone is so inspiring in its own way, and it'll take you a week to just, just get through some of them. President Barack Obama, God, don't we miss that president, uh, <laughs> Hillary Clinton, Nancy Pelosi, Adam Lambert, Anne Hathaway, Colin Farrell, Matthew Morrison of Glee, Joe Jonas, Joel Madden, Kesha, Sarah Silverman. The list goes on and on and on. Also, what I love are watching the staff videos, staff of the Gap, uh, Google, Facebook, Pixar. And these are just people that make the products that we use. And it's just every employee giving their message. And it is so amazing. Um, So we have tonight the It Gets Better Hotties, as I like to call them. Executive Director Brian Wenke, uh, currently working on the It Gets Better Global Reach, and we're going to watch a little bit of that, uh, whose previous work includes American Cancer Society and the Greater Los Angeles Zoo, which is where he started his research on bears, cubs, and otters. And I really, that's just, that just so awesome. Oh, my. <laughs> also from It Gets Better Project is Director of Special, uh, Special Events. Ross, now, how did I say your last name wrong? It's Von Betsky. It's not. That's what I said. I said Van. Von Van. You're famous and royalty. It's very, okay. it's very important. Von Metzke. How about if I do that? You do that. <laughs> Ross von Metzke, <laughs> who has worked with the project since its inception. Uh, Ross has also worked with Dan Savage uh, on The Real O'Neills, Savage U on MTV, and It Got Better. Um, he is the former editor of Advocate.com and has written for the LA Times, Entertainment Weekly, Huffington Post, and more. And he is a socialite. Did you guys see LA Weekly this last no. week? Nice. It said gay hunks in Santa Monica or something. 
and there's a picture of Ross with a drink. He's like, "Give me a drink, bitch." <laughs> no, but there was your face. But it was so, so funny. Bad. <laughs> I just there thought it was funny because no, I was like, "You look like no, you had been dancing a little bit." There was nothing hot about that, but I hadn't been dancing at all. There's no air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> there was a little shine. I was like, there's "Oh, okay, nothing. bro." <laughs> I have it now. I just sweat a lot. <laughs> but your Instagram reads like a who's who. You go to every event. You have a lot of fun. Your guys' booth at uh, at uh, DragCon was so fun. Queen for a That's day, fun. or yeah, That's very fun. fun. Rounding out our opening panel is, you guys, this is so fascinating, and I'm obsessed. Um, in the early 80s, my guest, Susan Surftone, was an FBI agent in New York chosen to monitor KGB agents assigned to the U.N. Okay, right? <laughs> the Soviets weren't allowed to travel more than 25 miles outside New York City, so she's, um, she would run surveillance and occasionally go undercover to sniff out their motives and next moves. Crazy! Uh, she soon became worried about her future with the bureau. Bureau uh, for a lesbian, upward mobility was not going to come easily. Uh, plenty of Hoover men were still in place, and it was the whole "don't ask, don't tell" um, attitude. She left the FBI to pursue her love of music with her obsession of Elvis Presley. Susan and the Surf Tones went on to record more than ten albums, became breakout stars in Europe, and even had a couple of songs featured on uh, a season of The Real World. Now Susan has a brand new EP, "Making Waves Again," and an upcoming bi-coastal tour. And as a writer, has been featured in Huff Post, The Advocate. And Cure. Welcome, everyone. Oh, hi. Like, talk about like everything under the sun. Tonight <laughs> is literally uh, under the uh, under the sun. So, my question to everybody is: Do we still need pride? Yes, yeah. oh, absolutely. And not for the obvious yeah. reasons of what we need to be seen, but but isn't pride just a circuit party? Well, not this year in Los Angeles. This year, uh, we're doing away with the pride parade, mm -hmm. and we're having a protest. So. Good, bad feelings about that? Because I was kind of like, well, the Pride is our time to be like have fun and whatever, but it's time to protest. Yes? Yeah, I think it's a good yes. – I think it's good. I think it's important to kind of remember what kind of motivated Pride in the first place. Um, you know, although I love – I love the parades. And for the last 13 years, I've gone to the West Hollywood Parade with my husband and kind of, you know – Wish like oh I'll go to the gym next week after watching <laughs> all of the beautiful people Girl. walk on the street. But like you know I think it's important to to remember why we're here and what we're fighting for, and that you can't get comfortable. You know you got to keep marching forward until until you get what you want. Until there's a point where you where don't people... have to come out every day mm -hmm. where people just don't care. Yep. Well, I also if, think if we want to keep it, we have to stand up for it. Right. Now when I was in the FBI, I could be fired if they knew I was gay. Mm. And, you know, I, who wants to go back to that? I don't. But my thing about you at the FBI is I've seen the outfits they make people wear. Don't they expect <laughs> lesbians to just come out? I mean, come on. They make you wear those suits and the Let's Oxfords. Let's say I wasn't the only one there. And I dressed cool, I must tell you. Well, your whole attitude is cool. Your story yeah. is fascinating. There's many articles. Google uh, Susan Surftone. Your whole background. I mean, FBI agent, is it as cool as we think about, like, in the movies and on TV shows? It has its moments. A lot of it, well, sitting around in parked cars waiting for something to happen. But when something happens... <laughs> Gay men do that in West Hollywood, but yeah, it's something else. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, yeah, it kind of is. I would say so. Yeah, yeah. So cool. But there's a lot of paperwork, as we'll know on Thursday when Comey presents his paperwork. Guys, what's going to happen? What, what, what do you think is going to happen? I think he's going to stand up and tell the truth. I mean, he's a pretty, you know, I hate to say the word straight shooter on the show, but he is. And, um, <laughs> you know, I think he's going to tell the truth. And that's why Trump's tweeting like a crazy man this week, because he's nervous. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's cornered. Yeah. So not only did you have to keep your, your sexuality a secret in mm -hmm. your career, but you had to keep your career a secret from everybody that you knew, because you couldn't spill secrets or talk about your undercover work. Well, you could say you were an FBI agent, and I can't talk about it. You said that a lot. I'm an FBI agent. I can't talk about it. That's like saying, hey, I know something about you, but I can't tell you. It's like, yeah. tell me more! <laughs> Roswell, what's going on? <laughs> I wish I knew. I wish I knew. <laughs> so did you have to like learn a, like, a Russian accent? Like, How undercover were you? No, I just, well, the thing that I did, I, I was an American. I, didn't have, I wasn't pretending to be a Russian. But that, that was good because my Russian accent probably would have stunk. <laughs> <laughs> so they probably would have caught on and I wouldn't be here. Um, it was a lot of, they knew we were watching them. And the fact that we were watching them kept them doing what they were supposed to be doing, although they did try to do things. And um, we were just, the idea was they were here in the UN mission, that's fine, and just do that. And that's what we were there to make sure that they did. 
that's so crazy to me. Like, this is what you did for a living. Mm-hmm. 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 Especially going undercover. Like, you see, like, Law and Order. And, you know, I would want to be friends with the people that I went undercover with because I love everybody. And if I was undercover and I went drinking with some of the people that I was supposed to be, like, I'd be like guys. you know what's the truth? Here's the <laughs> truth, you know? I'd be the worst, like, spy or undercover. I remember I was obsessed with Alias. And I remember yes. when Alias yeah. was on... I went on the CIA website and was like, I could do that. And the first question is, how good are you at keeping a secret? And I went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fail. <laughs> no, I, I interviewed with them, actually. I mean, it's the FBI and the CIA at the same time. But they do like a whole psychological test. and all, I mean, they, they did some testing, yeah. Well, I hope yeah, so. Yeah, they, they, they give you a gun, yeah. Yeah, so they have to do a little psychological testing, yes. That's crazy. So I fooled them. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you th- how do you think the FBI is responding to this current ad- administration? Oh God, um, I'd hate to hear what they're saying behind closed doors, but um, they have to do their job. That's the first thing they have to do their job, and they have to kind of put it out of their head, and they just have to focus on the job that they're tasked to do. Um, if I were an agent today, I wouldn't be happy with the things I'm hearing coming out of the Oval Office, but you have to do your job. That's what you're there for, and that's, that's, that's your focus. It's not keeping Trump happy. It's keeping the U.S. safe, and that's what you have to do. And getting to the truth, you do the task that's assigned to you, and you have to keep, like, when I was, when I was in, um, Ronald Reagan was president for most of it, and I, I didn't like him at all, didn't vote for him, but he was basically my boss and I did the work. I didn't realize, because I remember when I was a kid, Ronald Reagan, you know, everybody loved him. He was a gentleman. He was like the last president that looked like a president, acted like a president. But I didn't realize how against, like, not against, but he just wasn't supportive of LGBT and he ignored the whole AIDS epidemic. I didn't realize that whole part of the Reagan administration. I can't even imagine being uh, a gay person open and active during that time. That must have been a huge slap in the face, especially during the AIDS epidemic. I think that's the problem. That's why you don't want to go back because you know, when I think about the things that happened to me and things that I put up with, it was just the way it was. And you don't want to go back to the way it was. And it's hard talking to younger people about it because they don't know. Mm-hmm. And all you can say is you don't want to go back there. And the guy in the Oval Office, and especially Pence, if he gets in, that's why I don't like impeachment makes me nervous. Right. It's like, uh, uh yeah, it's worse. good. Yeah. 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 It's like, you just don't, we've gone so far so fast and we have to keep going forward and we might have to fight for it. And that's what I love about the It Gets Better project is how do we reach young people? And we use social media is the biggest is the is is the biggest way to reach young people and telling your story and and like telling them that it does get better. And of course, having a celebrity or two or three or hundreds of celebrities, um, you guys have this huge movement that has started from a simple uploaded video of telling people, "Hey, it gets better." Um, it's become this huge. Phenomena, uh, right? You know, it's uh, and you know, just speaking candidly, that it was never Please the do. intention. <laughs> you know, I think you know Dan it's an, and Terry. It's an accidental nonprofit, kind yeah. of. It really is. I think the the expectation was that you know a few people would share their stories, and that would be it. Um, and not really anticipating sort of the global you know spread of of this initiative. And you know, for the last seven years, we've been very much in a, in a reactive state of mind, um, just trying to um, find ways to, 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 to strategically place all of this outpouring of support that we've been getting. So the, the project is, was born out of the general public's desire to have it exist. Um, and, it's, and we are continuing to this day. People are still sharing their stories. And, and you see a lot of other nonprofits sort of leveraging the power of storytelling mm-hmm. you know, to, to get their message across. But you know, that's really what we are. We're just the sum of our stories. And, and it's a very personal, uh, very personal thing to share your story, you know, something that you've been cultivating for a lifetime. And you build walls around the things that you don't want people to know about. And you kind of bury things that, that ultimately you know, shaped who you are. And to be able to do that is... It can be a very empowering thing. It's a very emotional thing. But people are 
craving it. And for as long as they crave it, we will continue. If you guys have been able to harness this energy, though, because usually when, like, when a video goes viral, when something goes viral, it loses steam or it's just viral. People have clicked on it, but then they don't take the next – they don't engage. Mm -hmm. They don't take that next moment. It's like how many, how many selfies can somebody take shirtless and <laughs> they have a million thousand likes, but they can't afford rent. You know, it's, there needs to be more involvement than just being a viral phenomenon. You guys mm -hmm. have turned this into a cause and a purpose. I think in a lot of ways it's because it's deeply personal. I think, you know, a lot of people remember there's a period of time, you know, not that long ago, not much before the It Gets Better project where, and it's still in some states, you, you can't talk to your teachers about being gay. If you come out to your teacher, they actually have to legally kind of push you away and tell you they can't talk about that with you. You know, gay straight alliances in high schools, it's only in the last, you know, 10, 15 years that that was kind of even a thing. And yeah. so this idea of sharing your story with somebody through social media and a kid who has never seen themselves represented in their community can watch this story and see somebody that, oh, hey, I relate to that or I want to grow up to be just like that or maybe my future could potentially turn into something like that. It's kind of an amazing thing. And I think people never get sick of feeling like their stories of value to someone else. Yeah, I think there's such a hunger for authenticity and mm -hmm. just love. I mean, there's that's why we are in the predicament that we're in. There's there's a loss of love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's beautiful what you guys do. I grew up in a town of 97 people in East Texas, so like there was no idea what was going on <laughs> out there. I Try had... grinder there. It's like <laughs> next person is <laughs> oh, 2,000 no. miles. It was a nightmare. <laughs> Girl, you better put out if I'm going 2,000 miles. <laughs> uh, but, but you kind of, because you do video blogs and you you reveal a lot about your personal yeah, life. Yeah, I just try to be real honest. I think that's what's missing. People need to connect to something that's real. And what you see posted on some of the social media sites is not real. It's a facade. And I think people are longing for that. Yeah. I came out in South Dakota. It was not fun. Mm -hmm. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's why I make it South Dakota. Yeah. <laughs> and ironically, I'm from San Diego. So, all of <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's a big world, but it's a small world. You it know? It is. Totally. Especially with the internet now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, a buy-in from President Obama, who gave um, – his, his video is like a four and a half minutes long. I, I rewatched it last night, and I was just speechless as to the feelings and emotions uh, from somebody who, who has had to experience life as a minority but not necessarily from our community. And we forget how important our allies are sometimes. It's not just our gay community. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes when we have pride or we have protests in our own backyard, we're preaching to the choir. You know, it's like, how do we get that word to our allies? And this project is so great because it's like, well, you know, I have a, I have a son, I have a brother. We all know somebody. Mm -hmm. um, now, Ross, I, I want to know, and, and Brian, you've been with it since day one. Kind of off and on, yeah. Yeah, and you've seen the organization change. Mm -hmm. And Brian, you, you, your executive director, you mm -hmm. came to the organization in 2016. Yeah. How nervous were you coming to this project that's like a beast you know, and I know that, you know, you've had previous I'm experience. I'm still nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. Well, I mean, because it's, 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 it has such a track record, you know, and, you know, what could I expect to come into this, this world where it, it, it's just it's bigger than me it's it's i can't come in and say oh i'm gonna fix this and make it better you know and and fine-tune it when it, it doesn't, doesn't really need that um but it's been such uh, an amazing experience for me just being surrounded by these people that have dedicated their lives to it and it's it's become a part of their lives and that was really what was most important to me in this sort of next move for me is to to find find my tribe that was you know that was my career but it was also part of my life and from that perspective alone it's it's been amazing and we've been doing some great work over the last year and I'm really excited um, about what the next year has coming so. Russ how do you keep an organization thriving <laughs> <laughs> Brian, no, <laughs> no but um, it, it's it's like, like reevaluating your team. Uh, well, I think you know. I mean, he, he, I work for him, so I, I can only. You speak can't to say what anything I bad think. about him. No, Just, no, you no, can tell no, us. He's, no, we <laughs> but I can tell. say, yeah. you know, you, you make a really good point because this thing exploded out of nowhere, and we call it like in terms of it being an accidental nonprofit. Like the first year, there was a lot of like run ahead to catch up because it really, you know, people started donating money and they wanted you know they wanted us to work on these amazing projects and we were like it just started as a video what do we do and yeah. you know it was huge and i think 
it's been, you know, we're really in a period now, and for the last year especially, where now we're finally just sort of like, this is who we are, this is what we do, this is what our strengths are, how do we magnify that? And, you know, we work with incredible brands, we have incredible, you know, corporate entities that support us, um, you know, outreach in the communities, obviously through social media, you know, more videos, more stories. We just, we were at DragCon for the first time this year, and it was just amazing to see. It was see. such a fun booth, too. Well, I mean, and I just just to talk about where we were and where we've been, you know, sitting at that booth with that throne that said, be queen for a day. There were families that came up with kids, eight, nine, ten years old, and the parents were supporting their kids being there and kind of th their eyes would light up mm -hmm. when they'd see that, like, this was a photo op and this kid, he was probably like 12, sat in the chair and his dad's like i think we found our christmas card like the, <laughs> the parents were just so supportive and it was so you know we've we've gotten to a place at least with our organization where people you know recognize the name and recognize what we stand for and they feel like it's a place where they can be themselves and be safe and be happy and feel empowered I love it. Um, and I love what you're doing, especially internationally. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted to play a, a little trailer of, of what you guys are, are up to um, because the organization has thrived. And the next step, obviously, is to have that model right. uh, spread out. And so let's take a look at this. The It Gets Better Project was born a global organization. From day one, the moment our first video was uploaded to YouTube, our reach has spanned continents, inspiring tens of thousands of people to share their own stories with LGBTQ youth worldwide. We've come a long way since then. Earlier this year, we launched our 13th affiliate, It Gets Better Peru. Like our other affiliates around the world who share our mission, they are on the ground, in their community, collecting and sharing the stories that inspire and empower young people. Together in 2016, we collected hundreds of stories, grew our social media followings by tens of thousands, and inspired campaigns that are making an impact both on and off our screens. We also awarded eight of our affiliates and other organizations with grants to implement amazing local projects. And we provided six scholarships to future queer leaders so they could get the training they need. I'm Diogo, and I'm from Portugal. Hi! It's Daniela and Lena. Hi everyone, Jacob here, back finally from Wellington, New Zealand. I've learned so much just from my peers. It's just, I, I'm lost for words. I'm honestly lost for words. We're really proud of these accomplishments, but we want to do so much more. Join us in 2017 by becoming part of the global conversation. Tell your story, donate, help us expand our affiliate network, show one of our videos to a kid you know and love. Help us any way you can to create a more inclusive world for LGBTQ young people everywhere. Oh my god! Oh, Every time dear. I see that, I just love that. It makes me so happy. Well, I mean, it's other nations have it pretty rough. Here, I think, especially we're in the West Hollywood, LA community, we get so spoiled that mm -hmm. we can hold somebody's hand and walk down. Um, but we do see a rise of violence. But in other nations, I mean, people are getting killed literally every day for just being how, how, how they're born. Um, so it is so important to have our message. What else can we do with this current from everybody? What else can we do during this administration to uh, to raise awareness but not be like, oh, OK, beating people over the head because that's when people's. Feathers get ruffled. It's like, oh, here we go again. The gays are shouting up again, well, especially I think, when I do it. <laughs> I think it's important to go back to your initial question of the panel, which is, is pride still important? And I think what's important to remember, especially this year, is yes, the parade is gone and we're having a resist march here, but there's still a festival. We're doing a pride event. Um, a number of people are doing, you know, pride celebrations and things like that. It's, it's kind of a hodgepodge of we're standing up for our rights and this is important right now, but it's also, yeah, we should celebrate. But... To your point, I think in communities like West Hollywood, we do get kind of blind to what's going mm -hmm. on around the world. And, you know, we were kind of rather shocked when things went south at the end of last year and things were not as good as we thought they should be. And, you know, it sucks, but it's a reminder that you can't just sit back and relax and expect that everything's just going to sort of keep evolving and keep being okay. Like, to your point, we, you know, we, it could happen if we just take a step back and don't stop fighting. So, you know, it's an, it's it, we, we've got to be visible and we've got to be vocal and we've got to be clear about what we deserve, which is equality. And Susan, you had to conform for so long with your voice, with your music. What do you have to say? Well, 
I think that we need to be <coughs> informed and we need to know our history. I know that I was inspired to do the Elvis thing, not just by Elvis, but uh, by Stormy Lavera. I don't know if I'm saying her name right, but she was the drag queen that they say threw the first punch at Stonewall. She was the door person at some of the clubs in the 80s, and a friend of mine introduced me to her. And my friend was a drag queen, a drag king also at that time, and she showed me a photo of Stormy when Stormy performed. I was like, God, I want to look like that. I just want to look like that once in my life. And that's why I did the Little Bit Lied To video where I put the jacket on oh, and yes. put the hair back. I just wanted to be the person that I knew was inside me. Hmm. And uh, finally finally be that person and i have a little i took a little screenshot of that and i have it on my computer and it says this is the real me i love that that's the real me and um i just think we need to be informed we need to know our history and we need to know that we cannot go back and honor those people like stormy who did so much for us and went through so much she told me stories about that you could be arrested for wearing three pieces of men's clothes and it's like oh i'd be in jail <laughs> so, you know, they did a lot for us, and we can't <coughs> betray them by letting it go. And I think that's very important mm -hmm. is we forget how much work has been done, and we, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's our duty. It's not just, hey, we should stick up for yourself. It's our duty to, to honor the to legacy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I agree. What I a great kickoff for Pride, by the way. <laughs> I mean, I've just got, like, right? the chills. I'm all warm. <laughs> yeah, and I never, like, am nice or... <laughs> <laughs> get active at all. Um, you guys are actually doing a, a fun event uh, this this coming weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit uh, about the event. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, it's all is, you. That, that's me. It's all you. Um, yes. Special yeah, events, girl. Heard. That's your <laughs> look at your business card. <laughs> I haven't come in yet. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> um, it's our second year doing this event at the Standard Hollywood on the Sunset Strip, so we're really really excited. Um, great have, venue, by the way. It is a great venue. We have Gigi Gorgeous, who, if you've seen her YouTube yeah. documentary or any of her YouTube videos, so inspiring. She she documented. She started, you know, doing makeup tutorials and documented her transition on YouTube. So so excited to have her be our host. Um, it's just it's a really important time to kind of get together celebrate you know raise awareness for you know the work that we do we have our affiliates from peru mm -hmm. are coming up oh and going to be our guests <laughs> there which is i can't get a date in the u.s i might as well get one from from outside last year, Peruvians. We last year we had our affiliates from colombia come up this year it's peru it's a great opportunity for them to experience la pride and hang out with us at the hotel um if you want to get tickets they're still available it gets better how do people it gets better dot org forward slash LA Pride. I love that I did the slash. Yes. <laughs> to remind myself that it's there. Um, but you know, and, and we are gonna be a part of the Resist March the next day. And we, you know, I think it's important to have both. You know, I don't I don't want us to get to a place where we're only, you know, out in the streets marching. I think it's important to have a celebration. But that's true too. Because you know, yeah, that's that's a good point. But the standard's a beautiful event space. It's from one to five on Saturday. Um tickets are thirty five dollars for general admission, fifty five dollars for VIP. All of the ticket sales proceeds go to the It Gets Better project. The standard is generous enough to do that for us. Um and there'll be Booze and sun and a pool and pretty people and it's West Hollywood. What if you're husky? I mean, pool parties are not like my thing. There's a you photo fucking booth go and tell them to and suck a, it. And a cactus <laughs> lounge and you jump in the pool anyway. A cactus lounge? <laughs> and that's what Sounds comfy. It. It's, a cactus lounge. it's the wallpaper. It's the wallpaper. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. You know, there's, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're really excited. And, and it's diverse. Yeah, totally diverse. Totally. Like. I don't bear my skin for the world. It's I'm super duper pale and reflective. So like I would never do that. But were you at the haunted okay. house the other night? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think, but, no, I think people hear Pride celebration, they hear pool party, and they immediately turn to what you said. You know, Gay Days Orlando is, which is a circuit party. This is very much like an opportunity to come and hang out with your friends, poolside. Some people will be in the pool. Some people will be in their seventy. SPF Neutrogena sunblock <laughs> in the corner <laughs> with a towel over the head. You know, an umbrella. Um, the weather's supposed to be good this year. And Gigi is great. I have a little story about Gigi. Uh, we did the opening for uh, Reverie was having that uh, mm -hmm. out web fest. Mm -hmm. And I jumped the red carpet because I hate waiting. <laughs> right, Jennifer? Yeah. <laughs> and so all the photographers came over and click, click, click. And I was like, oh, God, I'm more famous than I realized. And there was this pretty girl next to me. And I was like making faces with her or whatever. And then all of a sudden they got so mad and pushed me off the red carpet. It was Gigi. And I was in her <laughs> picture frame. Her frame. <laughs> I thought, oh, God, look, I'm famous. But she was so gracious. And she was having fun. 
but she didn't say, hey, get out, whatever, because she's right. huge, and her documentary is so great. Is uh, you can actually watch it on Reverie, which is one of our media partners. Um, everybody should upload their own story, correct? Absolutely. So mm-hmm. how, how do we do that? And I want, I want all my listeners for Pride, celebrate Pride, whether you're in a shack in, in I don't even know, a small town, whatever. Neilanville. Um, there you go. Um, if you've been a guest on my show, uh, listen to my show, your family, uh, do this. Celebrate your pride this way at least. This should be the thing that you do. So how do we do it? Well, it's it's really simple. And, you know, if, if you have a phone, if you have a computer it, that has a camera on it, there it doesn't need to be spectacular. These are not supposed to be Steven Spielberg productions. <laughs> and that's what I love exactly. about it, too. It's just very, it's like you said, it's just telling your story. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's just turn the camera on yourself and talk. And, you know, it's... It, it sounds a lot easier than what it actually is. It's really difficult to, to drum up some memories, yeah. you know, but it's incredibly cathartic and it's it has a healing component to it for people who are sharing their stories when it's really for youth who are just looking for stories. Someone to relate people. to. Yeah, just like them. They just yeah. want to know that there are people out there like them. And if your story is only 20 seconds long, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Um, just get on the camera, talk. Go to itgetsbetter.org, and you can upload your video there, and just let us know that it's there. And we'll easy peasy. It's 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 a piece of cake. Yeah. It's really easy. And I think it's important you touch on this to remind people that everybody's story is important because you have no idea who is going to be watching your video mm-hmm. and need to hear what you happen to say <laughs> in your twenty or thirty seconds. It's really it's it's one of the most touching, easy things you can do for the next generation. I really believe that. I mean, the celebrity stuff is great. It, it generates a lot of focus, and it's, it's important, you know, it, to generate some awareness. But like you said, you liked the employee videos. I loved it. It was like, this person is actually working for a corporation that I, uh, that I participate in. Mm-hmm. They're just like me. It, uh, I loved it. And to see businesses gather together, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. that's – talk about a corporate – Right, but it's, it's so important because like the, these major corporations have work sites across the country. They have work sites in South Dakota, in East Texas, and you know the, the whole. What I love about that is that it shows that you can find community anywhere. You don't have to flee your hometown, no matter how small. There, there, there's always something, a thread to to find. So, um, I, I am with you on the employee thing. I love that. So again, just everyday people. What a joy. Like, what a joy it's been to, to get to know some of the faces behind the organization. Um, and I'm going to do my own video. Can, can, I have, can, I, can I have a cocktail in my video? Sure. <laughs> That's how it got better for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then worse. And then jail. And then oh, what? No, just Encourage just, responsibility. <laughs> yes, responsibility. I'm going to put the cocktail down. That's how important my story is. Okay. How about that? There you go. That's I'll how do one that. Well, this is just yes. water, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's happy water. <laughs> um, and if you're in the L.A. area, uh, go June 10th uh, to the Standard in Hollywood. Get your tickets. Support it. Send a donation. Add, uh, add It Gets Better project to your, uh, to your yearly giving. Uh, see It Gets Better at Pride near you. I know you guys are working very hard to have a presence at, at Pride. Uh, mm-hmm. Support the organization. What's your uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram for It Gets Better? Twitter said It Gets Better. And Instagram is It Gets Better Project. I believe so. I think it's that it gets better. All you have to do is it gets better and then it pops up. Yeah. Um, I should know that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Day two on the job. (laughs) Learn our stuff. We should learn our flyer. Yes, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Um, Before we go, Susan, I have to know, what is a surf guitarist, by the way? A surf guitarist plays surf music, which is... um, Dick Dale started it in Southern California and it was supposed to be like the, the sound of surfing and he had the heavy reverb and everything. I don't necessarily play that way because I inc- incorporate more 60s garage because I grew up in New York <coughs> State and I'd hear songs like Wipeout and things like that and yeah. I like them but the 60s garage band sound was important too so I combined the two and a lot of other bands combine other things with it but it's that kind of clean guitar you know it when you hear it. Now, what training did you have? Did you did you learn guitar by, by ear, by... Well, the Beatles came over in 64, and I drove my mother crazy until I got guitar lessons. So I got a $30 guitar, and I got guitar lessons with the, um, the wedding band guitarist in Hudson, New York. And after the first lesson, he knew I could do it. And he was very encouraging. I got to hand it to Joe Skaraki. That was his name. 
that he didn't, I was a little girl who could play, and he'd never discouraged me or tried to get me to just play like little folk songs and stuff. Mm -hmm. He knew I wanted to play rock and roll, and, <laughs> and that's where we went. That's he taught awesome. me the Ventures, the Beatles, Elvis, the whole thing. And um, it's kind of amazing that he did, but he did. And that was, I like the clean sound of the guitar, and I didn't sing at the time because I had a low voice. As a young girl, I always had a low voice. You did voiceovers for B. Arthur after yeah, she passed. Yeah, yeah, I could. I could. <laughs> That's totally a joke, you guys. I could, I could, I could. But um, I used to sing to Elvis records, so my voice go very low. Yeah, you know. And um, the teacher, the music teacher, thought my voice was too low, and she wouldn't let me sing. So, wow, mm -hmm, yeah. But you've shown everybody it does get better. It I mean, you've had album better. after album. Yeah. You've toured the world. I, I've toured in Europe four times. Yeah. And I love you. You guys have to go to YouTube and put in uh, Susan Surf Tone. I love you're playing this huge, big music, and your approach is just very like nonchalant. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> very I'm filing my nails, I'm answering the phone, I'm tweeting. It's, like, it's, it's really God. I hope I play this song right because if I make a mistake on these songs, that people know they're going to hear it, and it's going to ring out like a bell. So I just hope I get this note. Okay. Is this song almost done? <laughs> I love it. Where can our listeners follow you and find you? At um, susansurftone.com. It's all one word, no caps or anything. Yeah, and you have you have video clips. You have links to your articles mm -hmm. uh, that you've written and that you've been a part of. Um, okay, we're going to take a break. Uh, when we come back, we have live performances by Queers Folks. Also, the woman has sang with Tina Turner and Around the World with Hugh Laurie um, and my friend Pepper Mache and the X Factor's Kitty Brocknell, who Lady Gaga stopped the X Factor show to run up on stage, cry and hug, and they had their moment. Um, and a special appearance by Ricky Rebel. Um, and while we get situated for our second half of the show, enjoy Susan Surftones. Up, down, and all around, which is a Friday night for me. <laughs> <laughs> and when we come back, we're still celebrating Pride. Thank you guys so much. Thank Let's get you. to it.
All right, we had to get situated here, and we had to pour some more drinks. Um, anyway, let's give a shout-out to our sponsors, uh, Test Loop. It is the way to travel from L.A. to Palm Springs to San Diego to O.C. Go to testloop.com. It is cheaper than an Uber. The VIP experience is unbelievable. You get your own little private pilot. You get your own private seat. You get snacks. It's wonderful. Um, so do that. We're doing that soon, yeah? <laughs> yes, we are. Okay. Very soon. Um, also, our, uh, our sponsor is Hoochap. Hoochap, you pay, uh, you pay for one drink, and they send you 30 free drinks throughout the month at a bar near you. Thank you so much, Hoop app. Uh, Hooch app. Hoop. Hoop. Yes. Our other tried and true. We love them. Gay, straight, in between. You need spunk lube to add some spunk. In fact, oh. everybody goes home with a bottle today. Ooh. And you yeah. do not forget it. Yes. I used my Ooh. laugh from last time. Oh, did you? It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> it works really well. There. I've seen the machinery you use during your show. I can see it's like, <laughs> squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> fully, fully lubed. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, but we love this sponsor. They have been our sponsor from day one. The guy who runs it. You know, he's competing with the major labels. And so support an American homegrown uh, small company. Yeah. <laughs> it's good stuff, too. Thank you to our media sponsor, Bear Cubs and Scruff, celebrating the male form of all types. We love them. They repost all that. Yay. Go to Instagram, Bear Cubs and Scruff. Cubs. Thank you to our fashion sponsors, Swish Embassy, all the fun pop culture T-shirts that you could muster, mister. And Zoo for the People. Zoo for the People is accessories for men. And they can make even my flapping wrist <laughs> look manly. I look like Les Miserables. Like I just... <laughs> <laughs> came out of something. They're also a huge supporter of the wildlife conservation efforts of WWF and Wild Aid, so go to their website, pick yourself something pretty. Finally, our Moment of Shade brought to you by Panache Optical Gallery. They do custom retro um, eyeglasses, sunwear, but also uh, modern styles for all the celebrities, um, and they can help you out too. So they, they present our Moment of Shade. <laughs> you guys, this Moment of Shade warms my heart because it's so me. <laughs> Uh, 28 years ago, Carmen Jimenez from Madrid, Spain, became completely blind due to a serious eye injury. At least that's what she said, including her own family. Um, she faked it because she was tired of having to say hello to people she didn't want to greet. Oh, wow. Her quote this last week, I was tired of meeting people on the street and stopping to say hello. I've never been a very social person. And by pretending to be blind, I was able to avoid many social responsibilities. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm obsessed with Carmen Jimenez. <laughs> like, right. I got with her. But you know what the backfire is? Now she's facing legal stuff because she uh. registered as a blind person. Oh. Way to get that placard. Oh, wow. <laughs> you can find the show on Twitter and Instagram at On The Rocks On Air, Facebook, On The Rocks Radio Show. Book me for a wedding funeral. Keith Sinera, I'll be there. I don't care. Baptism. <laughs> Info at ontherocksradioshow.com. Email us if you have a guest suggestion, you have a comment, uh, do that. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to start the second segment with my friend, the dance diva, the soul sister. Oh, Lord. Miss Pepper Mache. I love you. <laughs> diva. Yes. Can y'all clap for me? If I could find the beat. <laughs> I just can't try and hide what I know I'm feeling inside. Cause in this life I have got to do what my heart knows to be right. Won't let nobody tell me how I should be living. Can't live my life with no one else but me. Cause I'm deserving all the love that I've been given. I won't be nobody else you see. This is my life, hold my head high, living with pride. This is my life, hold my head high, living with pride till the day that I die. I got my pride, I got my pride, I got my pride, and no one's gonna take it away. I got my pride, I got my pride. I got my pride and no one's gonna take it away Away No one's gonna take it Away No one's gonna take it away Woo! Happy Pride 2017! So, Pepper, this is like a Saturday Night Live moment where I should give you an On the Rocks jacket. You have been on the show more than any other 
person uh, as a guest. Where's my jacket? <laughs> <laughs> I want one of those jackets. Yeah. Right, Will? Yes. yes. I want a jacket. Just like we get T-shirts, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Just to boast a little bit about Pepper, uh, <laughs> Tina Turner turned to Pepper and said, you got it, girl. Or, what, what, was, what was Tina's comment? He, Tina. <laughs> I got you call her by her first name. She hit me in my diaphragm. Ooh. Because when we were invited to come and sing on the soundtrack for What's Love Got to Do With It, I was, was the contractor. Uh. So I had to get the singers. And when we started singing, I was a little shy. Oh. After being in the business for like 25 years, then... And she says, I want to hear it from there, mm. not from here. Mm. And before you know it, it was like the whole curtain had came down. And I was so relaxed. Mm. And we just sung our answers. <laughs> Can I say that? Oh, yes. 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 We've said worse on the show. Oh, my God. We are so blessed with this segment. All three of you performers are out at the fair. Um, and Pepper, not only have, have you performed with, with Tina, but you also toured the world. And I mean, you guys were in deep Europe. You weren't just like in, you know, cruise, cruise city Europe. You guys were performing with Hugh Laurie. Who knew that Hugh Laurie... In his blues band. Mm. It's so good. I'm part of the Copper Bottom Band. Yes. Awesome. And you also, so you, cool. you were also there when he got his Hollywood star of fame. Yes. Um, but of course, I know your voice from Queer as Folk, uh, the U.S. version, Dive in the Pool, listen to that on repeat. That helped me come out. I mean, how could you not come out? In fact, we're going right. to end the show with, with, with that. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then we have Ricky Rebel. Um, hot off uh, your, your own documentary on Reverie Network. Right, yeah. Oh, you also have, you, you've opened uh, with Britney. You've, uh, huge names. Yeah, and Madonna. Don't forget about Madonna. Don't forget oh about Madonna. God. I was signed to her label. This is, right. th this is who we have. And Kitty Brocknell, X Factor's sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Lady Gaga literally stopped the live show, came on stage, hugged you, kissed you. In fact, we have the picture of that. Oh, oh my gosh. We played oh, cool. the clip last time, but... These are the these are the singers we have on on the rocks. Just yeah, so you know. yeah, yeah. Major major divas. Yes, here. and all of you guys, we're all going to be together this Saturday out at the fair. So excited! And will again, what is out at the fair? It is the LGBT Day at the San Diego County Fair. Stunning! Woo! Yeah. Yep. That is so cool. And Will created it. Yep. Right? Oh my goodness! Yep. Will. Me and my friends, we just started going to the fair. We checked in on Facebook. The fair found out the next year. They reached out to us, gave us some pins. Yes. And we've been working together ever since. Excellent. Yay! Oh. It's kind of crazy. I'm lucky to call oh. it my job. Wow. What I want to talk to you about, all uh, to all three of you, is, and I personally uh, have known this, you guys have worked in so many different types of venues, from huge venues with thousands of people. But, and I've seen this personally, you'll also, in fact, Pepper, I did, I hosted a brunch at Rage in West Hollywood. Right. Where we had, we had the most fun, but it was, it was Rage in West Hollywood. <laughs> you guys take that superstar power and give it 110%, whether you're performing for thousands of people or whether you're in a place that you might, or like, oh, who booked me for this? <laughs> but you guys never let it show. How do you do that? Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Rebel is almost like a Mormon. Like the only exciting thing that passes through him is like Oval Team. <laughs> it's true. It is true. You're like a master yoga instructor. <laughs> yeah, well, you Pilates, but yeah. Oh, yeah. It's pretty much. It's quite popular. <laughs> Imagination. Yes. yes. Yeah. I'm the mother of those two. <laughs> so I'm a little. I'm a little contained. <laughs> but how do you keep that attitude and that performance level up? when you're just like oh wow when you love it it doesn't matter yeah. whether there's you know how many people are in the crowd you know you want the the maximum you can get right. but uh, if there's only like uh, a couple well, however many at rage we, we've both done shows like that yeah you just oh, give it fact, your we all. We did that regardless. show together. Oh I my god, there. you guys! I totally remember. My it was a pop <laughs> night, and it was like a two-hour show. <laughs> you yeah. were there with your whole troop doing oh. this huge, big performance of like professional, like flags and lighting and all that. I got up and sang a show tune, and everybody was like, "What the hell?" <laughs> 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 oh I sang Mr. Cellophane. I was like, "Jazz hands." Oh and my was like, god! Uh, of all songs. And here's Ricky, like sometimes boys and sometimes girls. And I was like, yeah. "Oh god!" <laughs> no, well, that's exactly what it was like. It was like silence. It was like my mom in the That's background. Great. <laughs> I remember Tuesday night. You killed it. <laughs> you guys, this is so funny. What a small world. It's Last Tuesday. Tuesday. 
yeah. Tuesday after the show, I went to uh, karaoke at Rage, and yeah. who was there but Kitty Brock? No, and uh, it's funny because I was drunk. You were a little tipsy yeah. too. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. And the, <laughs> and the karaoke DJ literally had access to YouTube, and that was her karaoke library. I know, but she oh, didn't. Wow. She didn't like. She didn't put the uh, the songs at the correct uh, the correct key. Oh. So I said, she was oh. just searching was it on too YouTube. high or too low? Yeah, it was Both. frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot the same work this out. But yeah, it was kind of. I was I was a little self conscious, yes. <laughs> but sometimes the venue, the audience is just not what you expect. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? You have to give them a hundred and fifty, two hundred percent, even if it's just one person. Yeah, that's how I grew up. Yeah, doing the entertainment. Doesn't because you never know who's in the audience because it, it only takes one yep. Yep. producer exactly. or one you know you never know booker. who's listening. He's right there, and right. he saw you, or his friend saw you. And then it mm-hmm. changes your destiny for the rest of your life. Exactly. Yeah. It really can be that one person. So I don't perform for just, you know what I'm saying? I, I think of it that way. I think about who potentially could be that I need to influence or meet, you know? I will tell you that the first time that I did dive in the pool was on Muscle Beach <laughs> in 2000. 5,000. They were all. I want them to put my hands on all of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. If I could turn back time. <laughs> and this was before I got married to the wife, of course. That's what I wanted to bring up. The wife. Pepper, you have yes. your own coming out story. For yes. years, you were the LGBT dance diva. Yes. When I met you, the first time you were on the show, it was it was titled differently. And you're like, this is my wife. I was like, what, 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 what? Yes. Wow. And I fell in love with your wife as much as, 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 as you. I had grinded out my career for 12 years after... I got a divorce. Mm. I have two grown sons, and I just kept this straight, narrow path of the music, of giving my all until I met my wife at an AIDS benefit at a lovely organization called Life Group. Saddle up, LA. Saddle up, y'all. Wow. And because they gave me a horse for three to four hours to ride. <laughs> yeah. And they're delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to ride. <laughs> to ride, oh. Alex. Oh. Alex. <laughs> I see barbecue, I'm like, everything's fair game. <laughs> if you don't dress it up, it's fair game. <laughs> and that's where I met my wife back in 2011. <gasps> wow. But so, but yeah, people but don't just become yeah. gay, Pepper. So I am feeling this, her so much. Yeah, I gotta tell you, her energy is like it's like love on me. It's like, like it's love, just radiating right, baby? out. Yeah. So, but this had been a part of your life that you weren't able to express, or well, I just didn't want to. Ex- after my divorce, I didn't want to express nothing to nobody other than yeah. my music. Mm. Yeah, we're because all musicians. I had raised, we all know how that works. Because I had raised my Diving. sons, and I was a parent. During the 80s, when everybody was getting on the Lionel Richie tours, Elton John, I had to stay at home and raise mm. my sons. Mm. And I got into the studios in L.A. Okay. singing for everybody. That and what way. was hot at the studios at the time was dance music. Exactly. And, and I had no idea what dance music other than Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> I had no idea what was going on until... I ended up doing dance music with great producers out of London. The best. Like the best dance music. Grant comes out Nelson, of London. Joey Negro, mm. uh, Tough and Jam. These were people who were huge in the house, house. music mm. scene. Nice. What, what I love, Pepper, is that you know, we, we know your dance diva voice. Uh, you came on last time uh, and you sang House of the Rising Sun. Can you give us just a little acapella of, of that? Oh, I hate you, Alex. I know, I know. I, I knew. love you, Alex. I, 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 you. you guys, honestly, it, it chilled me. I actually put my drink down. I go under the name Sister Jean and CB, who's my acoustic guitar player. And I also have a blues band named Sister Jean's Blues Machine. And we do this. You guys, no matter, because you guys perform in, in L.A. Yes. It's a whole different version of her voice. It, it's I'm following Mavis Staples, y'all. Yeah. Let, let's, just, let's just hear a little bit. There is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. It's been the ruin. Of a minute 
poor girl And I'm only You love. took us to church right yeah. now. Yeah. Oh my God, chills. That's the bread and butter right there. Oh <clears> thank you, baby. Yes. Uh, huge fan of Pepper. In fact, I, I, I got you booked at an event in Long Beach. She shows up. They don't even have a microphone, whatever. Um, and there's actually a picture on Google. She, they had to reverse the headphones or something. She's singing into headphones. And she's giving it 120,000 percent. Making it work. Yeah. Yep. You gotta make oh, wow. it work. Right wow. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Ricky, we haven't. I promise t- we'll have a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Will, I love you. I'm in good hands with you. Yes, you yes. are. You, you all three always, of you are. Always, right. He turns it out every time. Mm. There's video. There are video screens there. It's, it's incredible. That's stunning. Incredible setup for us. Well, Ricky, you performed live for the for the news segment yep. about out at the fair, um, which yeah. is on YouTube, by the way. Do you ever get nervous because you're like on mainstream news and you're doing something that's a little out of the ordinary with dance moves out yeah. of the ordinary? There's yeah. like hay behind you and like hay fried things and hot dogs <laughs> and, <laughs> pizza, and I'm laying on the bench donuts. Behind. Yes, <laughs> on the ground. And it was in the morning too. <laughs> it like, was in the morning. Yeah, you guys have to watch this segment because it's unbelievable. All of a sudden, you're just like boom, 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 and the newscaster was like, "I don't know what to do." <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen this. I don't think I've seen this. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's 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 on YouTube. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Was it Fox? Fox Five, right? San Diego. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah it should be. Fox is the one that filmed us that day. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I've, I don't think I've. Seen you it have yet. to see oh, it. Wow. Um, but I, we haven't spoken since you did South by Southwest. I try not to think. To answer your question, <laughs> you, I just, you just get into it. Yeah. If I think too much, I'll psych myself out a little bit. Well, I'm obsessed. I always do it anyway, but <laughs> if you think too much, it makes it harder. But it's, but it's kind of weird in that environment <laughs> where you're like, well, I don't have my dancers. I don't have the lights. I don't have this. It's 10 a.m. and I'm. That's oh, the way. it was like we were at the fair at 5 30 a.m. Oh. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We early. saw the fair come up. I that literally day. slept the for sun. two hours. The day, that day. Uh, Well, you can't tell, girl. You were on point. Thank you. Um, I want to play a little bit from your favorite video of mine, and I have it on my... (laughs) I was going to say gym playlist, but let's be honest. (laughs) It's on my playlist. (laughs) It's like a real (laughs) playlist. Yeah. Uh, um, But let's play this. I mean, and everybody's obsessed. Gay, straight. Everybody's obsessed with this video. Let's play France was really obsessed with this one, too. Yes. Well... Sometimes girls. 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 So that's that's Ricky Rebel. But here's the thing. If you go see him live, you get that on stage, which is crazy. He could be at Trunks Bar, which is the smallest bar in West Hollywood. Oh, yeah. You see this literally come to life. Um, Yeah. What I also love, too, is I saw your parents help set up like they set up the t-shirts and the CDs. Oh. Your parents are amazing. Yeah, they're there every show, every show that they can be at. They're always there uh supporting me from the very beginning, you know. At, well, remember my mom was yep. there at the at 5 6 Yep. 6 a.m. in San yep. Diego, my mom and dad. That's beautiful. You know. Yeah. It is beautiful. You have a very supportive mom. My mom is supportive, but she'd want to be on stage mine too as well. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, yes, she would. She'd be like, is this thing on? Yeah. <laughs> mom is coming up. Mom is singing out. Right, right. My mom could not be farther from that. My dad, too. Oh. They have a, stage, a little bit of stage fright. Ricky, I have a picture of you at the shooting range. Oh, I loved it. So you literally, you take your personality everywhere you go, even with your, with your Pilates, whatever. This is, so, like, how would you, because I, I don't want to insult people and say femme, because people think that that's an insult, but yeah. your femme mask, or, like, how, if yeah. you were to fill out a profile, like, what would you self-identify? Well, I call, I call myself the new alpha, okay? Oh. What I am is a combination of femininity and masculinity all, like, in one. A it looks pretty balanced. damn good. So I've got like the chains it's to represent nice. my yeah. masculine side. I have a very tough side about me. Very manly, whatever you want to call manly. I have a very tough side and a very soft, quiet. 
feminine side. So let's too. look at the shooting range. So when I you like, walk into the I shooting range, you're like, um, yes, I'd like to buy an hour of time and I need the biggest gun you have. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I walked in there. I, my, my fiance was like, you know, you should do more fun. You're getting things. married? Uh, not, Ooh. We'll talk oh, TMZ! <laughs> You I, heard it here I, first. He, yes. All he tells right. me, he's like, you need more oh. hobbies. You need more friends. You need to hang out with your Gun friends shooting. more. <laughs> that's and the first he, hobby I go that, to. But that's what yeah. he told me. He's like, I'm you like need, needlepoint? I don't know. He says, I have friends, but I'm not, I don't really hang out because I'm always working, as yep. you guys know. But yeah. he's like, you need to hang out with your friends more. You need to call your friends more. You need to do more hobbies. And I'm said, so one night I was like, you know what I want to do? I, what I really want to do for fun. He's like, I need to have more fun. I'm like, I want to go to the shooting range. And he's like, no. <laughs> no, I'm not taking it. He 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 grew up and where guns. He he knows all about it. I'm like, you mm. have to take me. I want to learn. I want to mm. know how to do this. And so we went down there, and it was so cool. It was so amazing. They give you this the this gun. It's really heavy, and you shoot it. It's like poof, like the oh. it pulls you back really hard. <laughs> yeah, oh, so I know. I went shooting off. once. Like, <laughs> I was not asked to come back. That's when I went shooting. I, I did really well. I hit like <laughs> really? right in the center, nice. I hit, like this oh in the chest. And, like, you did really well. I got that terrace right in the. <laughs> all right. No, I, that's all what right. I was picturing. I can't. I hate them. So, in terms of style, <laughs> I want to shoot. It's fun. It gets it gets your aggression out. You yeah. know, it's really good for that. In terms of style, you know, I'm looking at Kitty Brocknell here. Okay. You set up. I want to show one of the the glitter pictures from from one of your uh, photo sessions. Oh, your okay. style has Ooh. has become. Iconic from your appearance on the X Factor, yeah. you became. I, I wouldn't even know how to categorize you, there, uh, Tony. There's also another picture. It's in. Uh, keep going left, 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 left. left. There you go. Oh, oh my gosh, yes. you're covered in glitter. Literally, that took about three wow. hours. I love yeah. glitter. How many showers did it take to get rid of? Oh my gosh, that stuff did not leave my apartment for <laughs> three months. Oh. Glitter is the herpes of the craft world. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You should see my garage. That's a t-shirt. That's a swish and say t-shirt. You should see my. There garage. is actually a website. It says "Send glitter to your enemies." Oh, of course, glitter. And box. Right. and it yeah. and it's horrifying. You receive glitter in the mail. You can't get rid of it. Yeah, it did not leave. It was under my fingernails. It was everywhere because oh. every single show that I did to perform this song called Glitter in the Sky, I, I just chucked glitter all over the audience. And everyone was like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. And then afterwards, we're like, I'm not going to be able to get this out. They hate you, <laughs> and, <laughs> they hate you. and I had one point where I was I got all my dancers to dump glitter, like huge ass, huge pots of glitter that were like six bucks each. Nice. On me, I was like covered in glitter. I thought it was amazing, and then I got home. And I was like, oh, oh. oh dear, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, yeah. oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> so <laughs> polite. I've been like, oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kitty, you were oh. the X Factor. Uh -huh. When you auditioned for the X Factor, yeah. your look was very different than how you ended up. Did the X Factor create your look? Or no, you... no. I was very strict on what I wanted to do, and I I knew what kind of artist I you wanted to be. Pushed the limits mm -hmm. on that season. And they didn't you. even they didn't want me to do that. They wanted me to be. Uh, this 26 year old joke where everyone was laughing ha ah, look how crazy she is and they wanted me to go Ooh. super 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 crazy and I said no I'm a really serious artist I want to make my own music mm -hmm. and I had my own like idea about what I wanted to do which is kind of goth but pop Ooh. so it's a goth artist but I'm doing pop music and it was very dark and very gritty and but also really sexy and really pop and they just didn't get it. They were just like, Oh, just go on stage and be crazy kitty. And I'm like, No, I'm not gonna do that. Um, so all the producers hated me and uh, they kept uh, you know, trying to twist my words. They were like, Oh, so I do an interview and I would say a bunch of things and then they would say to me, Oh, okay, so what we want you to say is this, 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 this and I'm like I'm not going to say that. Uh -huh. You're literally putting word into my mouth. No. They do that. Uh, yeah. They do that. So yeah. I was uh, really strict on what I want. I, I've never met Simon Cowell. Everyone thinks I know him, but I've never met the guy. Uh, if I met him, it would be interesting, but I don't think he liked me because I didn't play ball at all. No, you didn't. <laughs> but literally, like, on your show, and YouTube this, it's like a viral moment when mm -hmm. Lady Gaga comes up, she just cries all over you. Yeah, she, wow. she was wow. there that night when I got voted off, and um, they said to me at the very end, they say to you, Oh, is there anything you want to say? And you're supposed to say, Oh, I'm so grateful. Right, right. And I'm mm. really appreciative. I'm like, Here's the that. picture. Screw that shit. And I and I and I literally sang Born This Way. I said, I'm beautiful in my way. Yeah, I did that whole All Born right. This Way moment because I mm. felt that it was really 
I just fit the moment. I was really in the moment. And there was a lot of uh, a lot of my fans who felt like it was great that I was being so completely different. And uh, and then Lady Gaga ran on stage and she took me off to a dressing room. And we had a huge hug. We had a massive, massive chat. And then I never oh. heard from her again. <laughs> but um, we had a, an hour long moment, which was really nice. And I'll still remember it. So. But that's like our star moments where we get insp- inspiration yeah. for the rest of our lives. And, yeah. and that's yeah, what it is. Really fun. In fact, Kitty, you, you're going to share a little bit Yay. with us. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> and. I, I just love this. Okay. Uh, Kitty, introduce what you're going to sing. Okay, so I'm going to sing uh, one of my songs. It's called Light a Candle. I really, really want to release this at some point, but um, it's on my album. Investors, are you listening? Yes, please. Right. Um, so I want to release this at some point, but it's called um, Light a Candle, uh, and uh, it's one of my favorite songs ever to perform. I just, I love it. So thanks. When we were young, oh, we used to say, never look back, oh, never how far we go. Mm. You and I said we'd stay the same, but I grabbed my stuff, I ran away, never look back. But oh, how I missed you so, baby, looking back, you'd say, I'm on track. Chase your dreams, don't ever let them go. Oh, but I wish somehow you were with me now in every way, in every part of me. So light a candle for everyone, for all the friends who are dead and gone, for all the friends we've left behind, we'll see. Well, our stars may burn out someday Another one will come to light the way Don't worry about a thing, so raise a glass and sing Oh, yeah, yeah Yeah See me through all my ups and downs We say we'd go underground Oh, chasing back streets Oh, living free You're married now with a baby I wish I could say call me maybe If I only knew you're the one that got away Oh, baby, looking back You'd say I'm on track Chase your dreams Don't ever let them go Oh, but I wish somehow you were with me now In every way In every part of me Oh, I light a candle For everyone For all the friends Who are dead and gone For all the friends We've left behind We'll see Well, our stars may burn out someday Another one will come to light the way Don't worry about a thing So crazy Way. I've tried to forget your face, but you keep turning years in a second. I can try, but I'm never gonna forget your face. I light a candle for everyone, for all the friends who are dead and gone, for all the friends we've left behind. We'll see. Oh yeah, well our stars may burn out 
the fair is ready Ooh. wow that That's was okay nice um, <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing i could envision oh. like a video couldn't you guys yeah, envision yeah. like pictures of people's faces yeah. i could mm-hmm. also envision this song mm-hmm. merging into pepper taking a verse ricky taking a verse and it all all three of you come together like superheroes wow i love it Kitty, that was amazing kitty oh, it's an amazing so amazing song I, I, I really that was amazing yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I oh. I was wanting to sing along, and I didn't even know. <laughs> it. That's, when, that's a good I'm song. glad you didn't, like, sir. <laughs> I can't. I will do to what I know how to. It'd do. be like Helen Keller sing along. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. I could I could tell uh, our listeners, you know, people are like, oh, you know, singers, it is so difficult to sing live. Number one, period. Number two, in a studio like this, it's dead air. There's no acoustics for a good reason because it's spoken. Yes. And there's no audience to feed off of. All you guys, bring it. <laughs> oh. I cannot, like, I'm just... We'll have to give it to the engineer. Yeah! yeah. Good job. Tony! Uh, it's all about that. Thanks for the auto-tune yeah. and no, all that. No. <laughs> there's no auto-tune, there's nothing. No it can he couldn't even wear a button-up for pride. <laughs> 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 I want to know what some of your funny stories from the road are. Oh, my gosh. From oh fans to yeah. venues, like the roaches in your trailer. Like, what are some roaches of the funny stories? Trailer. I did an independent... <laughs> Because I can act just if anybody wants to book me for acting. And there was a roach in the trailer. I can't oh my do that. God. I have the I, best story. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. I just, I feel like this is the moment where I need to tell the story. Okay. Because so, you didn't uh, just wow us with your <laughs> song, by the way. All of us are like was stunning. speechless. Oh. I was like looking at my notes. Awesome. I'm like, can I top of this? Uh, right? I am a blouse, a feminine top, you know. I, 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 I just love this story. And, and uh, I've told a few people and they, and they just cry. I would love to. I don't know. Um, so this is all true. I did not make any of this up. So uh, I used to um, <laughs> I used to tour around the UK with my mom, and uh, she used to uh, bring my equipment into the venues, and she used to help me with my equipment. She used to drive the car, and it was we had this little white van. It was really amazing. Anyway, um, I used to just do you know clubs and stuff, and we used to find venues where I could you know sleep the night. So I stayed. The, I did this uh, uh, small club in a place called Bolton, which is uh, really far up north, and there's not really much there. Um, and uh, there's no hotels or anything. There's just kind of pubs where you can stay above the pub um, or bar, whatever. Anyway, I knew this place and I knew that it had accommodation. So I called them uh, the the day before and I said, hey, you know, we, we're really desperate. We're looking for somewhere to stay. Uh, you know, how much is it? And she's saying 60 pounds. And I am always a negotiator. So uh, I said, uh, I you said, were negotiating well, with the vodka. You, by the way, you're like, can no. I get two pints for a dollar? I'm no. like, I don't even charge. <laughs> Oh my god! So I, I said, well, you know, we really only have forty pounds, but if you, if you, you know, don't have anybody, you know, could you accept forty? And she sort of huffed and puffed, and she said, okay, 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 okay. So I'm like, all right. So anyway, we turn up, and it wasn't really the place that I remember. It was kind of a bit low rent, and we thought, okay, we'll just leave, you know, we'll deal with it. And we turned up. And we opened the door and the place was sort of clean. But, you know, when you go into a place and there's and there's a fridge and it's a bit moldy and there's yeah. some milk in there that's been there for three months. And, oh. and the shower had a bit of black mold. Around, and we're like, oh God. Oh. Anyway, we thought, it's a bed. It's a bed. It's fine. Anyway, uh, I put. This is how the UK and works. And I've eaten out of many fridges. <laughs> this, <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is how the UK. Uh, this is how the UK works. Anyway, um, I had a bag of my of my clothes. And he put the bag of clothes on the bed. And then uh, we sat on the bed and the bed broke. Um, and we're like, and we're, and we're still saying, it's okay, it's okay, we'll deal with it, we're okay. And me and my mom just think, oh, it's fine, it's 40 pounds, you know. Um, and uh, so anyway, I lift the bag of clothes off the bed and there's a poo. 
Oh, on the so bed. No. There's a, there's a <laughs> wait, 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 from what animal? A human or a rabbit? We weren't a sure at first, yeah. but it was, but it was a dog. I'm not sure what I'd be most upset by. Yeah. Did a rat do it was, that or a person? It was, it was a dog. It was a dog or poo. A rabbit. A ra- you know. It was a dog poo. Oh. It was a dog poo. And yeah, we were slightly concerned. We thought, okay, this is slightly worrying. That's a Yelp and, review. Uh, yeah. We're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's a poo. And we thought, okay, this is a bit oh. worrying. So anyway, I'm like, oh gosh, what do I do? So anyway, I thought, well, we better tell the manager because this is not really very good. So I go and knock on the door of the of the bar owner's manager. And they in the UK, if you own a bar or you have a bar, you usually live in the bar above mm. above it. Okay. So we knock on the door to her apartment. And the dog opened it. Uh, <laughs> no, her 12-year-old daughter opened it. And oh. I said, hi. Um, we're, we're staying overnight. Is there any possibility you could get the manager? Because there's a poo in my room. And uh, <laughs> the way she says it is so polite. Poo in my room. I it's like a musical on Broadway I, next I year. I literally said this. And poo she, in my room. And she says so in the proper. thickest, the thickest Yorkshire act, Mom, the dog's done it again. Uh, and I, so and I'm like, uh, I'm like, again? Uh, again? Uh. Anyway. The mother comes out, the manager of the bar, and she comes out with her. She's obviously just got out of the shower with her hair all wrapped around, you know, her towel around her head in her shower thing. She comes out to it. You've done it. And I'm like, excuse me? And she's like, you've done it. You've done a poo on the bed in order to get money off the room. Oh. (laughs) And I'm like, no, that didn't happen. I'm like, mommy, there's something wrong. And she's like, you've done a poo. You've done a poo. I'm like... God. Wait, wait, wait! You actually think what I kind just of like hotel she running? <laughs> <laughs> like I say, squatted? I don't do that till the third night that <laughs> I have to pay. Squatted on the bed and done a poo in order to get money off the room. And she's like, "You've done it! You've..." And she looked really scary. She came at me. Ah. She came at me. She's she like, "You've done, done a poo!" Unrefund. And yeah, and, and then it was Simon Cowell. And she went Amanda's into the ass. bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. She went into that the was horrible. Oh poo. my god! <laughs> <laughs> she went into the room and she sees this poo on the bed, oh. and and she's like. This is unacceptable. You've done this poo, and I, I got really angry. And I'm like, no, this is not really. This is outrageous. And and I, I got really, really angry. I was like, right, well, you know, if if you think I've done the poo, I'm gonna push it all over the bed. So I, I took this poo in my oh, hand and started smearing you it. Smeared it. Oh. I smeared it everywhere. Girl. And my oh. mom, and Our my mom was like, no, 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 I no, cannot, no, no. I cannot. I cannot. I have something about no. It went far. Yes. <laughs> yeah. okay. And then thank we, you, Kitty Bruckner, for your <laughs> famous. <laughs> yeah. That's a Buzzfeed. That's a clickbait. <laughs> And you click to the end, you're like, I wish I had it. <laughs> um, we actually... All right, no kidding, we're done. No. No, there's no smearing anywhere. Well, we ended up leaving. We ended up leaving the place. We didn't have anywhere to Did stay. Did you wash your hands? We didn't... Yes, of course. Right. I do the show. Right. I do the gig. And then oh. we ended up having nowhere to stay. And we ended up driving about four hours to try and find somewhere to stay. Oh we ended up God. sleeping in my van in the car park. I'd rather sleep in a white van than I have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was not my. But I thought that they was have the best sharing. candy in white oh. vans. <laughs> that is so rude. Oh. Ricky, what is one of your funny Please stories me, from Ricky. the road? I I remember. Thank I was, you, Kitty. By the way, that was Kitty, like that was a story. I don't know. If I <laughs> no, that was that. a novelette. That was like novelette. a Stephen King novelette. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna see we're gonna see the movie, and Morgan Freeman's gonna play Kitty. <laughs> Morgan Freeman. I. Okay, I remember. It started out with a poo. <laughs> it started <laughs> out with a poo. I don't know. I can tell uh, top the poo story, but <laughs> I don't think anybody can top anything. I don't think anyone can top okay. poo. I was uh, in a boy band called No Authority, and we used to tour. We toured Europe a couple times. And I remember going to Europe and, you know, we went to London. We were in the UK Mm -hmm. and all these girls are all around us. They were the first ones to have uh, like cell phones. Oh, good. No, they're all on the phones. On the phone. Can we take, can we, can we we take a picture of you? And blah, blah, blah. Actually, there were no pictures on the phone, but they just want to take regular pictures. Anyway, um, long story short, I remember that I was sleeping in my room one night when, right, right when we, we came into the room, I slept and I woke up, and there was a girl in my bed. Literally. Like, like a ghost or girls, a girl? Girls. There were girls in the closet. What's in your video? Girls in the closet. <laughs> I was in the closet. But these girls were in <laughs> my closet, and they were in my bed. Like, a girl was in my bed. Like an actual. An actual. Like, like you woke up next I woke to up, her? I woke up next to her, and they're like, ee! And they giggle. She was Japanese. 
No, no. <laughs> oh, she was from the UK. These girls are from the UK. And then I woke up and I'm like, what the hell? And so they ran out. Like, did you <laughs> scream? And they ran out. I was like, I can't believe it. These, uh, these bitches just came into my room. <laughs> <laughs> and we're hiding. Creepy. They were hiding in the closet. You know, because we got there. To get there yeah, then? they were oh. all they were hiding in the closet. I guess that's how you know you've made it, right? Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, wow. that's I how know I, this happens. Yeah. I thought that was really fun, and I love telling the story about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was I wasn't really scared. I was just like, oh, what the hell? This is crazy. I would have been like, new subscribers to my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, sign up. You at least have to add me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's your Pepper, one of your crazy. That that sounds like what happened to Hugh on one of his tours. We were in Russia. You guys were in deep Russia, by the way. We, we were in beautiful all five, theaters. Ooh, yep. five cities, the ooh. major ones. Yeah. And this happened. I think it was in Saint Petersburg. <coughs> we're getting off stage, and it was a great night, sold out. And we start getting on in our van to go back to the bus. There's somebody sitting in the back. <laughs> this, it wasn't this young girl, and she's just smiling. Now, personally, to me, I'm thinking that it was just one of the the sound tech people, or the people okay, taking yeah. care of the band. She was just sitting there, <laughs> just smiling, and everybody's wondering, who is this person in the back? There were three band members in the back with her, just sitting next to her. <laughs> in was the she band. like a roadie, or she was a fan? Oh, <laughs> fan! But that's what happens. Was she cute though? I don't even remember because I was cracking up on the floor because she couldn't even speak English. Right. <laughs> oh, that's the best, actually. Oh, yeah. That's I the agree. best fan. They're not going right. to kick you off. It's like, Ricky, she couldn't speak English, but she was so quaint and so polite. <laughs> but the the big, burly uh, bouncers came on the, on the van, took her off. Was she still smiling? She was still smiling. <laughs> but then by then, no, the whole on. band was smiling. Oh we God. were cracking up. We couldn't believe it. I wow. give her guts for doing that because yeah. I've been fans, super oh. fans of people, and I've been right outside oh, the yeah. dressing room doors, and I'll still respect and not go in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my Officially. God. It took me forever to meet Madonna. She was, like, right oh. outside. But you were on her label. I know, but at the time we were signed to a, to Michael. She was jealous Michael of your Jackson's teeth label. because they meet. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we were in the studio, and then my, like she was recording "Ray of Light," I liked it. and then I knew she was there, and I couldn't get myself to like to get out of my own studio to go meet her in the parking lot. It was really terrifying. I was terrified to meet Madonna. So finally, my friend was like, mm. "You're meeting her." He grabbed me and came outside. Mm. You're gonna go meet her. So she was playing with her daughter, Lola, on, on my friend's truck. So that was a good reason for us to go and approach her. And we, we, I met Madonna. It was awesome. That's stunning. Well, she's my, she was my hero, like, big time. This is, this is my next question, and then <clears throat> we have to wrap up the show. But when you guys meet your superstars, like, how do you deal with that? Because all of you have oh. met superstars. The real ones. Yeah. The yeah. real ones. I've real met people. Michael Jackson. The ultimate pop star. Oh my gosh. So tell us about that because to me, I was never a fan of his music and his personal life. What? But for you, thriller, like, dangerous. He thrilled a lot of people. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but if he was in the room, I can't even imagine how you would talk. Well, I I used to go to Neverland Ranch. How old were you? I was <laughs> like sixteen. I was too old. <laughs> no, no. He. This is so awkward. No, no, oh my God. No, no, no. You're no, like, I, I could man the carousel, <laughs> pass out the diet coke, oh, walk wow. the monkey. I didn't mean it to imply that, but I'm just saying if I he likes him younger. But anyway, not saying that he likes him in that way. But what I'm saying is he likes popsicles now. Anyway, <laughs> the point is the point is is that I used to hang out at Neverland. And it was it was incredible. It was amazing, and he was the most amazing uh, person, host, and anything we wanted, we got. And he was very kind. He was very mm, human. Yeah. He was very generous. He's just a very sweet human being. And um, I had a great time. We used to go on the scooters together. Those little uh, those wow. little run. We used to go up the hills. He used to live in the in the hills. 
and I remember my scooter broke down or my little thing, whatever, four wheeler broke down. And he's like, oh, that's OK, Ricky. We'll, we'll, we'll just push it up the mountain. And I'm like, Michael Jackson, Michael is calling, saying my name. It's crazy. Wow. And it's like, I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God, I'm with the king of pop right now. And we're, gonna, we're about to push this four wheeler up a huge, like, hill. I'm like, how is Michael? He's like his little, like, s- very skinny mm-hmm. man. He looks, he's he looks small. The frail. Yeah. He's very frail and, like, kind of, you know, just ultra, ultra pale. I'm like, how is he going to do this? He grabbed that thing. He was like, like nothing. Just like, okay, right up the hill with me. And um, I always will have that kind of mm, moment of wow. lifting a four, a heavy four wheeler up a mountain with Michael Jackson. I'll never forget that. Meanwhile, uh, at 16, I was picking horse shit out of the stalls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure I worked at a potato farm, so that was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> potato farmer? Yeah, my uncles are. My parents suck. Yeah. <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> When I was 16, my mom was like, try out for this part. I'll sing it for you. Ah! She after the whole part. <laughs> uh, Kitty, like meeting Lady Gaga. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember her skin being really good. Mm. Well, she, both you guys' skin. You guys both look like... Uh, I had just had a facial today, so I'm kind of like, yeah, plump, but not. I don't usually have good skin. Um, but um, yeah, Lady Gaga had... Amazing! It was glowing. She was like, uh, it was like a halo was coming off her face. Wow. Um, and I remember her team being really weird. Her team were like full on weird. They were like mother well, monster. She, her team are the her claw up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but her, they all had the claw up. They were mm. literally sitting there with the claw, like oh mother monster. <gasps> oh, well, that's but creepy. she was super normal. And, yeah. and uh, I don't think Tony Bennett would have put up with that. Her by the team way. were like, her team were like, oh, mother monster, <laughs> right? He'd be like, interesting. Bitch, get that claw. Away from Interestingly, her. though, I'm Tony she got rid of her whole team. Um, okay. just after that, sh- th- just about a few months after X Factor, she mm. ditched her whole team really? and got a whole bunch of new people. She ditched her manager. She ditched everybody, sure stylist, everyone. And I don't know. It was really strange. I just remember her being really normal. Everyone called her Stefani. No one calls her Lady Gaga because that's her. Real name, yeah. Stephanie yes, She, uh, well, I can't say this on there, uh, but she used to be in musical theater when she was in high school, and she exactly. was not the prettiest girl, and she right. never got the lead roles. Yeah, mm. Pepper, uh, meeting a huge star. Your feeling? It was Lady Gaga. It was eight months before she blew up here, performing at all. Oh, the do you guys clubs. know that Lady Gaga performed at Trunks in West yes. Hollywood? She Trunks. performed mm. in the corner with Trunks when? with Poker Face. Oh, poker face. There's a video online of that. Right. I've seen it. Oh, I've never seen that. I've, I've seen, seen it. it. She's she's wearing like her lit- long blonde hair. Nobody knew what to do, but trunks, you guys. She did it at a uh, at Century okay. Western bar down in Dallas, gay bar, Roundup. Mm-hmm. She worked her butt off. Yeah. Let's just yes. put it that way. She, she, she used to do like four clubs in one night. Oh, wow. Back to back, right. to, back to back to back and do it all over but, again every night. But that's what, that's what you guys do, right? That's what it takes. Yeah. When, mean, when, I her, get a good, yeah. when I met her, when I met that kid, I was with Georgie Porgy, who's another big dance artist out of Chicago. We were at the Winter Dance Music Conference, and we were doing, I, I think it, it's the presentations of all the awards that the people would get. This young girl comes up to me and says, Miss Mache, I have been a big fan of yours for a long time. Wow. I'm getting choked. And I just remembered that we could not look me and Georgie both could not look below her neck because she had nothing on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm She's saying to her, really? Wow, baby, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Because she was so kind and so cool, but she was wearing not a stitch of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> it was all plexiglass, Bear. like little oh shapes. Nice. And with, oh. with, with little, uh, uh, not the full onesie, mm-hmm. it was kind of separated very flashy interesting <laughs> when was this this was in 08 in in march of 08 cuz that's when 08 yeah this is when the conference holds their big thing and it's at the end it's the last night of the event it's before they get ready for ultra for winter, the, all the winter DJs music conference mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and next thing i knew i come back to LA Honey, six to eight months later, she gone. Packing them in. It was almost like a, just a big old treadmill of bringing her in all the clubs. 
from out here to L.A. and then to New York, and then it just blew up. It just it just went haywire with Poker Face and Let's Dance, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I like that was my jam. I like them both. Mm-hmm. Me too. Yes. I like them both. Those and then favorite. I went and saw her that that uh, following April at the White Party, and they laid it out. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was it was really magnetic. The choreographer uh, Richie yes. was a friend of mine. Just Richard, stunning. I grew up with him. Yeah, it was almost like she had them all on the chains. Oh really? And she was walking them out. Oh my god! She was in the middle. It was just she kills incredible. It. Uh, I got some fan emails. <clears throat> Ricky, they want to know: Do you lip sync at your live performances? I do not lip sync. I sing over myself. So I have a track that's playing, especially on numbers where I am uh, dancing heavily. I do what mm-hmm. Madonna does. I mm-hmm. do what Michael did. I do what... Well, Madonna doesn't sing anything anymore. Yeah, she does. Hmm? She does. She <laughs> sings over herself. You can't. You don't like it? I'm singing <laughs> over herself. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, or Eminem even. I've seen Eminem rap over himself. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that technique. I can do it without it, honestly, and there's probably more freedom for me, but... Um, until I can get to, not to say that this venue, this venue is going to have good sound, but most of the time I go to venues mm-hmm. and clubs where they, the sound it's is incredibly awful. disgusting. So it's like the only way I can do it because, you know, they, until I can get a really good sound man with me to my vocal to cut through because right. I do not have a big, like, you know, this thing that she did and that he, I have a, I have a, a you know, a softer but I, I can belt, mm-hmm. but uh, definitely I, I like to be like this in the mic, and I like to really work the mic. But if oh, you don't have God, a good... because you're like, a, like, it's like entrancing me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you don't have a good mic, yes. if you don't have a good sound system, mm-hmm. they're not going to pick up that, vo- that vocal. You know, they're going to get only the, the shouting stuff. And so I have the kind of voice where if I shout and do something incorrectly, I lose my voice quite quickly. And I think that the universe made it very... Uh, made it that way for myself so I had to learn how to sing properly I had to learn how to mm. I, I trained with a vocal coach and a, uh, an opera singer and everything so I yeah so that's why I do what I do and how I do it your voice is just like an instrument that is so weird because some people can like Judy Garland would sing 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 mm. and she didn't know how to read music she wouldn't know how to take care of her voice but right. she was still able uh, to do that Kitty mm-hmm. Your fans want to know, can you come back to England, and are you happy that you moved? <laughs> oh. oh, that's really sweet. Um, the UK is too cold for me now, uh, and LA is really sunny, and <laughs> I like the beach. <laughs> um, I feel like I've gone as far as I can in the UK. Um, there was a lot of mitigating factors why I moved, but mainly because everyone just saw me as an X Factor contestant, so... Uh, I'm here because I'm a serious musician and I want to further my career rather than being just seen as someone off the telly, Mm. which I felt like there was no other option for me in the UK. Uh, Before the X Factor, I met a lot of managers and they were all over me and they were like, oh my God, we love you, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to get you on the X Factor. And I'm like, I'm not sure if I want to do that. That's not really Mm. credible. And they're like, yeah, 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 but I'll get you to the finals. I promise. I know everyone at Psycho. Yeah, 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 I'll get you to the finals. And everyone's saying this and I'm like, well, maybe I've got a shot. And, um... And I just did it. I, I actually had no contacts at all with X Factor. I applied literally the legit way, which a lot of people don't, but I did it properly. Mm. And uh, and I didn't even realize how far I'd go. But after I left the show, it was almost like I was damaged goods. That's all they could see. They could not see the fact that I write my own music. They just mm. saw a karaoke singer. And I'm like, this is really insulting. So mm. that's why I left. Um, I would love to come back to the UK. If you book me, I will come. <laughs> <laughs> we just saw a snippet of something oh. amazing, too. Mm. It's true. Thank you. You guys, uh, our listeners, how do they find all of you? What? <laughs> huh? Social media. Social media. Social media. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh no, no. Because uh, I see the time that we have to end. Oh, we have oh. To end. oh. yeah. So fine. Facebook, Pepper Mache or Sister Jean McLean. First thing to check out is my YouTube channel, Ricky Rebel TV. And my Facebook is uh, Ricky Rebel Rocks. My Twitter is Ricky Rebel Rocks. My Instagram is Ricky Rebel. Thank you. Oh, real fast. I have to say. The picture of you with uh, Jerry O'Connell. 
Cheerio Cuddle! Oh. You guys, it's just real fast. <laughs> oh my god, amazing. I love it. Do you see his face though? He's almost like, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> he was my childhood crush. So. I was like, he was right. my. He, and <laughs> I'm like, Jerry. I'm like, Jerry, come here. But you I, I, was very, I was very yeah, tough yeah, with yeah. him. I was like, Jerry, come here. I need to hold you. And I looked at my leg and was like, okay. <laughs> he was a good sport. He likes huskier men, just so you know. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Kitty. Oh. Yes. Um, oh, um, at Instagram, uh, at Kitty Brooknell. And I'm on Facebook and Twitter, but you can find me on Instagram. Please follow me on Instagram, at Kitty Brooknell. Thank you. I'm everywhere. Which one do you want? <laughs> well, everywhere you want to be. Hillcrest. Do the Hillcrest. Um, you can find me at Hillcrest Social on Instagram, out at thefair.com. You guys, if you're around, just DJ come. Bill Z. Because who knows what's going to happen on Saturday. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. We're all really going to be excited. there. We're all going to be there having fun. I'm going to be there before you guys, so I'm going to show up at like... Arr. I'm going to turn up really early so I can enjoy the sun and everyone, mm-hmm. see everyone's show as well. Nice. It's my first time doing the fair. Wow. It's going to be exciting. Doing a fair. That's... That's Ever. mom's apple apple pie. <laughs> is, that's is my right. fifth time, my fifth or fourth. Fourth. Wow. Time. Fourth yep. time. That's awesome. yep. And we've been grown so much in the last four years. It's crazy. Oh. It's now crazy. we have two stages that we book talent for all day. Really? We do. That's we, we're awesome. bringing in Lambda Archive, which we really want to teach everyone about gay history. Oh. We're bringing in gay oh, artists. Wow. We, it's huge, you guys. Yeah. That's this stunning. year and this, me. I'm sorry, but this is the real pride show. I'm sorry. I'm just going to yeah. put it out there. Yeah. Because you're not, it's not a label telling you booking shows. Mm. You, I'm not going to even mention the other one, but they're booking shows through labels and they're not even gay artists. But these are really gay. Right. These are LGBT right. supportive, LGBT, yep. you know, people that want to support art, our community. That want to support, you know? That's awesome. Because, yep. And this year, $5 from every shirt and a dollar from every hat goes to the Trevor Project San Diego. Awesome. That's awesome. We'd love that. Yep. Wesley. Uh, The (laughs) Wesley Woods. Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Not the church camp, I repeat. (laughs) (laughs) It's so weird. If you look that up, honestly, it gives like... Porn star or Christian <laughs> church? <laughs> I don't know where to send my money to. Well, that's why I picked it. You know, I Googled to see, like, if there was another porn star named Wesley Woods, and it popped up at church camp, and that was a sign from God, so. Everybody oh. wants to go into the woods, into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> that's Stephen Sondheim. He, he wrote it. I just support it. Tony, thank you so much. Thank yes, you, Tony. Yeah. We're going to oh. end the show. Um, Pepper Mache, your <laughs> signature. Queer as folk, dive in the Lord. pool. <coughs> we're all going to dive in the pool, and then we're going to go have crazy nights. So the <laughs> next day. <laughs> Pepper, can you take us home? Yes, baby. Home. Well, all right. How y'all feeling tonight? Y'all feeling good? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm feeling mighty good tonight. But you see, baby, it's a little hot in here. Yeah, it is. In more ways than one. Yes. So I got a little proposal to make to each and every one of you here tonight, especially you, Wesley. Yeah! I think it's time that we all go dive into the pool. Y'all want to go dive into the pool? Yes! Woo! Woo! Alex, I know you want to go dive. Come on! Come on! in the pool. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Will. We're out at the fair, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. June 10th. On Saturday. Come on. Let's get soaking wet. <laughs> Woo. Love you guys, everybody. Look up on the rocks. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, everybody. Happy Pride 2017! This has been On the Rocks with Alexander every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Universal Broadcasting Network.
Find me on Facebook on On The Rocks Radio Show. Tweet me or Instagram me at On The Rocks On Air. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs>